Good morning. So we're going to be carrying on our series of the climb and today we're going to be talking about preparation and community. So in preparation for our current series, the climb, me and Daniel have been reading up about climbers. So I just want to say that if there are any climbers watching, I'm hoping that I don't get any facts wrong or any words wrong. But if you want to feel free to help me out in the comments, that's fine. So when climbers climb together, it's actually called a rope team. And I've been thinking about this um, term a lot lately and how this can relate to community, family or team. So a community is a group of people who they all have common unity. So they may not all have the same opinions or maybe lifestyles, but there is something that pulls them together, that, that unites them. They're united about, about something. So when we tether ourselves together as community, we actually bring security and stability to the team. We actually increase each other's chance of survival because we do actually need each other. And you've probably heard me say this before, but we were actually designed to be together. When God created us, he created us to be community. And that applies whether you're an extrovert or an introvert, you, you still need people. And if anything, this season has taught me that, that we need that more than ever. But just like a, if a chain has a weak link, it's more likely to break. So if we have a weak link in our team or family or community, we actually increase the risk. So if one person falls, there's more risk that they will pull the others with them. So teamwork is really, really key. We must look after one another. Just like um, maybe with climbing, the whole team can't move on if one person is tired. They all have to stop and they, they're all going to have to rest because... They can't have a weak link in their chain. It's very important that they must ensure that everyone has full concentration, that they have full strength, and that and most of all, everyone is going to be safe. So climbers often use anchors. So this is something that will be attached in the mountain. They'll tap, they hit it into the mountain and they'll tie the rope onto it and it will be attached and that's the anchor point. So for us as Christians, obviously Jesus should always be our anchor point. So he's the one who is going to give up, keep us secure. He's going to keep us safe, um, no matter what goes on around us. And there's going to be times when others are relying on our anchor that we have made with God. So it's very important that we need to make sure that it's strong and secure because our anchor is not just holding our weight, but it's actually holding the weight of those that we're joined to as well. And yes, we, we do know that God can hold any weight, but he's actually given us the responsibility to help others, to reach out, to tether ourselves to other people. So we must have trust if we are to be community, a family or a team. And you know what? Trust takes time to build. We know that. But without it, there will always be a weakness in our chain, in our community. People aren't ever going to fully enter in unless they know that, that we're for them and that we have their back and they can trust us. So sharing our struggles, having hard conversations, going through difficulties together, championing each other and encouraging each other, knowing our strengths and knowing the strengths of others, loyalty, forgiveness. They're all important things. So Ephesians 4.32 tells us to forgive each other just as Christ has forgiven us. And all these things build trust in a community. And there will be times in a family where not everyone may see the bigger picture or they might not even agree with it, but that's where trust comes in. That's where trust is important. And there was a man in the Bible called Joshua and he led the Israelites into the promised land. And God had given him very specific instructions on how um, he was going to take the city of Jericho. And it was Joshua's job to go back and relay these instructions to the people. They were supposed to walk around the walls of the city once for six days. And on the seventh day, they would do it seven times. And when the priests blew the trumpets, um, the people would all let off a, a big shout and they would cheer and shout and, and the walls would fall down. And I mean, there must have been people who were like, um, really? But everyone had to have total trust in Joshua. They had to trust that he had heard God correctly, that he'd been listening. And they had to... They had to work as a team. They had to become a nation, one people. So we also have to have honesty. And if we're going to secure ourselves together as a family, as a team, as a community, we have to have honesty. It's so important. We can't lie to each other and say that we're fine when we're not. And if I was climbing a mountain with another person, so imagine it's Daniel 
and I asked them, did you check the equipment before we left? And they replied, um, yeah, I, sure, I think I did. There's no way that I will be attaching myself to Daniel because lack of honesty leads to lack of trust. I would know that he was lying and climbing with that person requires me to put my life into their hands to trust them. So another thing we have to have is we have to have awareness of others. So life is not a solo climb. We're not, we are actually responsible for the safety of others. And the idea of looking after number one is not how we should be living. I hate that phrase. We must look after one another. And the more that a group acts with one single mind, the, they're gonna have greater success. And the early Christian community was made up of a group of people who were so filled with the Holy Spirit that they were of one heart and one mind. They were so knit together tightly as community that they actually held all their possessions loosely and they willingly shared them with whoever was in need. So Acts 4 verse 32 to 35 tells us, and the congregation of those who believed, they were of one heart and soul, and not one of them claimed that anything belonging to him was his own, but all things were common property to them. And with great power, the apostles were given testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and abundant grace was it was upon them for there was no needy person among them for all that who were owners of land or houses would they would sell them and then they would bring the proceeds of the sales and they would lay them at the actually at the apostles feet and then they will be distributed to each other as as any had need. So imagine being part of a community of people where there was no one needy, no one needed anything, everyone was content, everybody had everything they needed. That would be an absolutely amazing community to be part of and I'd be proud to be part of that community. And sometimes in community, we actually have to take the weight of others. So a climber can actually tether themselves to someone who is heavier than themselves. And even if that person falls, they'll still stand a really good chance of saving that person because of the way that the rope's tied and because of the strength in the rope. And sometimes we have to build community with those who are carrying more than we are. Sometimes we're gonna be called to maybe join with those who are struggling, who are maybe, they may be carrying more, more weight that maybe that they need help with. And maybe they can't go on without us. And maybe they'll even struggle to survive without our help. And God knows when we can handle those times. So it says in the Bible that he will never give us more than we can handle. And I know that sometimes that it can feel like it's too much to bear, but he does actually know us better than we know ourselves. He knows the, the things that are waiting inside of us, waiting to be pulled out, the strength that's waiting inside of us. And Habakkuk 3.19 says, The Lord God is my strength, is my source of courage, my invincible army. He has made my feet steady and sure like hinds feet and makes me walk forward with spiritual confidence on my high places of challenge and responsibility. And you know, sometimes we can be in a season of challenge and sometimes we can be in a season of responsibility. So sometimes we can be in a hard season where it's challenging and we need help. And then sometimes we can be in a season of responsibility where others are relying on us to carry them. And I don't know if you've ever seen mountain goats, but the way that they rest on the on the little ledges that stick out on the cliffside is amazing. I don't know how they don't fall off, but their hooves are designed in a certain way that they are able to stand on tiny ledges that stick out and they won't, they even jump, I think they jump downwards or I've seen videos of it, but you can Google it. But um, they can they can balance on tiny ledges and they can do this because of the way that their hooves were made, because of the way they were designed. And that's the way God's designed us. He's designed us to be able to be strong enough to stand on our on our high places of, of difficulty in whatever season that we're in. He's designed us to do that. So um, he's he has given us times of seasons of responsibility and seasons of challenge. And, and we can get through those if, as long as we um, tether ourselves to the right things. So sometimes others might actually maybe take our weight because maybe we need their help. Maybe we're in that season of challenge and maybe maybe it's because they have more strength for the current season. Maybe they have more wisdom in an area that we need help with. 
And in those times, it's really important that we have to put aside our pride and that we have to receive the help that's been given us by God. So one of the other important things is we have to know our strengths and our seasons. So Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1 to 11, this is a long verse, but it says there is a season, a time appointed for everything and a time for every delight and event or purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to embrace from, from to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up as lost. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear apart and a time to sew together. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. He has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time. So it's so important to know what season we're in. And I love that verse because it helps us when we're going through good times, through bad times. It, let, it lets us know that there are seasons, that not, not nothing is permanent, that this is all temporary. We're cycling through um, seasons of change all the time. And if we're in a challenging season, it's not going to last forever that we're going to cycle around and we're going to we're going to come into a, another season. So it's really important that we know what season that we're in personally, because even though we're all traveling through the same season, we're all having our own journey, our own experience. And we might all be carrying different weights. And for some of us, this this might actually be a season of rest. We might actually have been called to rest of maybe taking a back seat for a while. So, but for others, it might be a season that we're called to step forward to be a leader. But if we actually try and lead when we're supposed to rest, then we're not actually gonna be walking under our, our authority for this current season. And there's gonna be times in life where we're called to lead and times when we're actually called to let others lead us. So climbers, sometimes do this so that a leader won't get tired or maybe a particular climber is maybe more experienced at the current place that they're at, at the, at the climb that they're doing. And there's so much wisdom in this that we can apply to our own lives. God is the one that we should be following ultimately. So it's really important to make sure that when we join with those people that maybe are gonna help us, that they're following God. That's important if we're, if we're a Christian, or at least that, they have good a good moral compass and maybe that their beliefs won't make us compromise our beliefs so we know that this season has seen community change there have been so many changes it's changed so much that we can't meet together like we did before and we've actually had to get creative with community i've seen some amazing things happen and we have definitely seen we've definitely seen some creative amazing things during this season so we've seen an example of the people come together to celebrate the NHS when we clapped on our doorsteps, people who've cooked meals for the vulnerable, for the homeless, the elderly. And I've personally seen God heal my family and bring us all closer together than we were before. But instead of hugs, we wave at each other from a distance or even through a window, or we might have grown further apart. So we haven't been able to celebrate in person with one another and instead, we've had to come up with creative ways to show those that we love that we're proud of them and to encourage them or unfortunately during this season it has actually been left unsaid maybe unforgiveness that was present before this season started it may not have had the opportunity to be resolved because of the the distance that's been placed between us and the barriers that have been placed between us or this season may have actually stirred our hearts to maybe make that phone call and maybe put things right and sharing our struggles has become crying to a friend or a relative on zoom or maybe a chat over the wall with our neighbor i've had a few of those with my neighbors or a friend or sadly people have maybe been left to struggle on their own without the support of others that they would have needed so i share it like this because 
Most of us will know that mental health is at an all time high right now and most of us have struggled at some point during this season in some way or another. And if you'll let me be honest with you this morning, I, I've begun to become concerned about community. So I'm worried that if we're not careful that we will lose something that maybe will be hard to get back and that maybe we're going to enter into the next season with something missing, something key that we need. And do you know what? I'm worried that we've become self-focused. And please know that I'm not saying this to offend because I know that there are, are a lot of you watching that are that have been working so hard to look after others and, and we want to say a big thank you for that. We, we appreciate you. But the reason that I'm saying this is because I want to stir things up for, for me and I want to stir things up for you and I want to be able to always ask myself honest questions and the answer sometimes be that maybe I need to do a better job or even that I'm failing at what I'm doing and I'm not doing a good job. So don't assume that people are okay or that someone else maybe will, I don't know, send that message or make that phone call or send those flowers or cook that meal that you were intending to because you know what they might not? Those people, may they may not have a rope team they may not have tethered themselves or joined themselves to anyone. They might not have community like you do. And please remember this season is temporary. It's going to pass. And when it does, we're going to be back together. And community is going to have to adapt yet again. It's going to have to change. And you know what? There's no going back to the way it was before. It has to be better than before because we've learned so many lessons. We've experienced pain. We've grown so much during this season and we've been challenged a lot. But because of this length of this season, because it's been so long, um, I wonder if we've become complacent or maybe inconsistent and slack with doing community. Maybe the novelty of Zoom has worn off and it now actually feels like a chore to talk to someone online. So today I want you to, to ask you to do some searching. I want you to ask yourself some hard questions and to allow yourself to be honest, totally honest with yourself. So am I just thinking about community and accidentally not doing it? Have I defaulted to preservation or even survival mode and have I retreated? Have I gotten used to carrying my own bags and forgot that others need help with theirs? And when you do that, I want to encourage you to go off somewhere quiet and ask yourself those questions. And maybe if you journal, write it down in a journal and just just write those honest answers that come. Really do some deep soul searching. And because I think sometimes we we think we're doing something and we like the thought of something, but accidentally we're not doing those things that, that we we really want to do. So I just encourage you today, just go off somewhere quiet ask yourself those questions, ask yourself, am I doing community like God intended me to? Am I living out community the way that I'm called to? And I also want to encourage you that community can look so different. It can look like the street that you live on, the workplace that you work in, your family, your church. It can look like so many things. You can build community in so many different ways. And we can use those keys that I've spoken about today to help us bring a build a, a tight knit community. And just because we're not meeting in person, it doesn't mean that community doesn't exist anymore. It's just different. It just means that we have to work a little bit harder at reaching those that that maybe um, are have retreated, have gone quiet, that we haven't heard from in a while. So I just want to encourage you, keep doing community, keep stepping it up a level, keep improving, because when we come back to being a person, I want us to be even better at community. I want us to have gone up a level. I want us to be tight and knit together. And I want us to always be challenging ourselves and always wanting to step up to that next level. So I really hope this has encouraged you today. I hope that you've taken away some, some key points that you can work on this week. And I want to encourage you as well to reach out to me and, and share with me, if you would, those answers to the questions that you've got. And, and maybe I can pray with you and maybe I can help you work through those. So be encouraged and um, we miss you and we'll see you soon.